Baruch HaMaboyim B'Shem Hashem B'Shem Egin Shri Torah I'd like to welcome everyone to today's shift from Harav Yaakov Zav Sumit Shlita from Hafsekim Ben Sashman Esrei I have the guest who is sponsoring this year called Egan Shari Tara 718-851-8651 Email IST at yeshivanet.com Harav Smith Baruch Hashem, we've spoken about Tfil in the past but we have a new group of Shailas All these Shailas came up Someone was davening Shman Esrei and he saw someone's hat fell down next to him Should he bend down and pick it up and give it to the person behind him? Should he assume the person will continue davening without the hat? Then we had a Yom Tashayla where someone was went to the Mizrach of Antedavin, and he forgot that there was Dukharing, and the Kahanam was standing behind him. So really he wasn't in front of the Kahanam. L'chayr, he's not part of the bracha. And he davens along Shemar Nasser. And the question is, should he continue davening and just not be part of the bracha, maybe consider him some Am Sheb Sadis? Can he walk during Shemar Nasser away from the wall and, and walk to a place that he's in front of the Kahanam like he's supposed to be? So one question about bending down, one question about walking, which sounds strange. And then I had a shayla, I guess it's a um, perhaps common shayla where a person started Shmei Nesser and then realized he didn't put on his garatol. Can he, during Shmei Nesser, put on the garatol in order to daven with the garatol? And then we had a shayla where someone had a, a major suffering in Allah for what to do. And here he is in the middle of Shmei Nesser and he didn't know what to do. You know, I mean, I don't want to suggest that, you know, texting might be an eitzah. <laughs> to someone that's not davening, but uh, we don't text them as medjish, but this is the four question that we began, and there are many more. So the emphasis is that a few weeks ago, Punkt at me, Taka Isu Chag Pesach, we discussed the importance of avoiding distractions during davening. A whole sugi about davening the right place and, and avoiding any potential distractions. <clears throat> Today's sugi is when you try to avoid it, but it didn't help, and you have all these shyless plus many more. So really the question, the one you say we have to clarify, it's Shtayim Shi Achas, is what's considered a hefsik in Shemayin Esther? Obviously Shemayin Esther is not a typical halacha, it's a Shemayin Esther. What's considered a hefsik? And number two, if there is a hefsik, is there any heta because it's Tzoyrech Tefillah? I mean, someone will, will have to walk during Shemayin Esther to stand, to move behind the Kahanam. So that's definitely halicha, but maybe the fact that it's a tzairech legitimizes walking during Shemayin Esra. Maybe a person has no choice, he doesn't know what to do, he's standing in Shemayin Esra. I mean, think about it. He has a shayla, should he continue or go back? He doesn't know halacha, what should he do? Munach Stand until Mashiach comes? What else should he do? And he doesn't know how to look it up, maybe talking to the Rav of his mutter. So question number one, what's the hefsik? And number two, if there is a hefsik, is there any hetlet tzarech tefillah? So what's a great start, the Gemara, actually the Mishnah in Brachis, the Flamar Amad Beis, says a shocking statement. I feel a person's davening, I feel a melech shayel b'shleimai, even if a king greets him, la yeshiven, ignore him. I feel a nachash karach ala kevai, and this is probably worse, there's a snake wrapped around his heel, la yafsik. Now, the first halach is a pliya, because we know how, how much importance Chazal attach to recognizing and acknowledging another human being. If someone greets you, in some cases you're allowed to respond even during Krishna. It's a whole simon, samach vav, and erachayim. But certainly, there's def- but it comes to a king, even though it's not a goyish king, so there's no chisakonis to fashis, but what's the, where's the respect ignoring a king? Melech shayel b'shleimen. And the other half of the mission is really a plea, a snake around your, 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 your heel. You know, people go to the zoo, they're scared of the snake. But here it's on his foot, wrapped around his foot, korach ala kevoy. Just ignore it. So the answer is the insight for today in a few words that this is oimid lefnei ha-melech. There's a concept that we have to understand, which is the essence of Shemayin Esra, the uniqueness of Shemayin Esra that distinguishes Shemayin Esra from all other tefillahs and brachis, and that is that a person is being zoicha, like the Mishra Shom writes in Perik Yutes, Oymid mamish lefnei abayri yizborach, v'noisa v'noisen imoi mamish, he's taking, carrying on a, a dialogue, v'yizborach mazin lai umakshiv, kash yedabe ish el re'eyu. Elmoli Kosov, I wouldn't say this, but a person is carrying on a conversation with Bari Yailam. Hashem svasei tiftah ufiyagetil asecha. And we once devoted a whole shir about halachas that are based on this concept. But today is another one of those sugyas. 
Because don't forget, the question is, Krishma Daraisa, you're allowed to be Mavsik, alt covered. So how can it be Tshvayin Esra, which like many Shittas, the whole davening is only Midrabonon. But certainly the, the Shvayin Esra of davening is only Midrabonon. There's no Chiv Davka Shvayin Esra if you hold Tfilas Daraisa. So how could it be that Shvayin Esra is more Chama than Krishma? The answer is the key words for today, Oymu Lefnei HaMelech. Krishma is the Raisa, very good. Tfila is the Fnei Now, if you don't want to daven, so that's your loss. But once you're davening, whether it's the Raisa or the Rabbanan, you are talking to Bari Yolam. And that is inappropriate. That is in, that it's intolerable. You can't stop talking to someone else when you're talking to Bari Yolam. <clears throat> now, this is the Orach HaShulchan says in the beginning of our Simon in Kuv Dalid. And Itaki spells it out. Even though Krishna, you're allowed to respond in some cases. But Davin is Oim Lefnei HaMelech. Even for Hefzid Momen and Koshkim year of HaKavayd. Because Lamaisi, you're talking in the Melech, Malchi HaMelechim. And the only Hetta is Sakonois Nefoshois. And rather the Rambam and Perek Vav HaLachetes. Einam Ispala Mavsik Tfilosei. Ela Mipnei Sakonois Nefoshois Bilvad. Very clearly and very bluntly. Nothing absent pikuach nefesh is muta during Shmai Nesra. Now, what could be even more than this? And here we come to a new understanding, a new appreciation of the Fnei Melech. <clears throat> the Gemara in Baruch Islam Bet tells a famous story. A chosar echad was davening, and a sar, a goyisha leader, greeted him, and he ignored him. So after he finished, the sar turns to this yid and says, you know, Reka, you empty-headed person, why, why did you ignore me? I could have killed you and no one would say a word because I'm a very powerful uh, person. So he said, can I explain myself? He goes, fine. And he told him the whole story. I'm to if you were talking to a king, you wouldn't stop for anything. I'm talking to him. And the Sarah said, okay. And he freed him. But the question is, we how did he get take the liberty initially of ignoring the head yoyt? This, this Sar. This Sar could have killed him. You know, the Ben Yayo, the Taiches, the Gemara says, Reiko, because this guy was a Lamdin. And the guy knew if, you, if you, a person commits suicide, Rahman al-Litzlan, then ain't the Chayel Gom Habo. And he held what the Yid just did was suicide. So, Oy Bazoi, Reiko, you, you, you lost all your mitzvahs because you, you committed suicide. So it was definitely a very dangerous, potentially dangerous situation. So how did he ignore the Hegemon, the Zisar? So the Taz, the Magan Avram, they say he was batuach, he was certain that nothing would happen to him. Frege of Shleim Beklugam in Chach Shleim is on the page. How, how you batuach in Pekuach Nefesh? It's still a chance. So he says a chiddish nifla, la halacha. We'll soon see more than just here. He says, Lamaisa, Gimel Chamurais, you have to give your life. And there's no tet Pekuach Nefesh. Something that's a chil Hashem. Even on a small mitzvah, you have to give your life. Zogdam Shleim Mekluga, this chassid echad held that talking to someone else during Shmei Nesra is a, is, a, is a colossal chil Hashem. And therefore, it might be a new Yerug Vayava. A new Yerug Vayava Tish. <laughs> but he's not finished. Zogdam Shleim Mekluga, now I understand the Gemara early. In Vavam at Beis, the Gemara says someone was davening a chari beis haknesses, which was a violation of Hilchas Tvila. Elio saw him and killed him. Frank the Islamic Klug, you kill someone for violating a, 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 a Sif and Shulchan Aruch? He said, no. But if you're davening and you're not davening appropriately, that's a Chil Hashem. And for Chil Hashem, he's Chayv Misa. <clears throat> now, I must add, as strange as it sounds, you look in the Sefer Chassidim, that's one of the Rishayim, one of the Baliyat Toysvis, Simen Tovshin Pei Zayin, Maise V'chaser Echad, he quotes the word, and then he says, if a person is Machma, not to interrupt davening, it's okay, even though he puts his life in danger. Varaya Daniel did it. As we know, he was Moisan Abshad Fila. And it concludes, Amru, I feel the So he makes he ties together the whole studio. The story of the Chasir Echad, Daniel, Nachash Alakevoi. If a person wants to be Machmir and give his life, not to interrupt Fila. He's not held accountable. Stam on a regular mitzvah, you know to give your life. So again, be, before you give your life for davening, ask a shayla. <laughs> I'm not saying we pass like a shayla, but the mere notion 
we see the oimek, the depth of oimek lefnei hamelech lalacha. Now the truth is, unfortunately today, we are used to putting someone on hold. You're talking to someone, you say, oh, one minute, uh, I have another phone, I have another phone call. Which the mice is lacking basic this. You know, my oma hai mehai. You're talking to someone, put them on hold for someone else. But we get used to doing that. But we can't put bari oilam on hold. Uh, some, a sar comes, a snake comes, you're putting bari oilam, on, bari oilam on hold. Or maybe it's worse, maybe it's hanging up on bari oilam. You know, I have to, have to talk to the heg, to, to the sar. Whatever the case is, <clears throat> Lamaisa, now we understand. Even if it's mutter by Krishna, but not by Shemayin Esther. And even if Shemayin Esther is Rabbanon, that, that's immaterial. The, the avla of interrupting tefillah could almost potentially be Yehara Vayava. <clears throat> now what I'm most despoiled about, and this is a different shir, but basically a person that starts davening with a guf she'in inaki, Mechaba says in Tzadik Be'ez, Aleph, tefillah se te'eva, and he has to read daven. Now I'm not getting into the details when is it considered guf she'inunaki? But if a person davens, even the you're not yoitz. Zok the same mechaba. But let's say a person started davening behet the gomer. He had a guf naki, but it happens occasionally. This a sudden need to go to the restroom. So the mechaba paskins, as long as he could physically finish the shmeinesra, finish shmeinesra. Even if he ha he'll go, he'll go two minutes later. Finish as quick as you can. Say every word and go to the bathroom. If your mamish can't wait the extra minute or two, so you stop and go to the bathroom and come back. Question. The first scenario, the Mechaba says you'll have to finish Shemayin Esra and run out. Now, obviously, this man has a gufshay and Naki. He absolutely is also to start davening in such a situation. So what justifies him finishing Shemayin Esra? Zakti Rajva, in the Tshuva Chelik Aleph, Semen Kuf Lamed Aleph, that once he started, he has to finish. Because even if Mayim, pardon, Mayim Shoy says al Birkov, it's only Nisit Rabbonon. So how do you violate a Rabbonon? You're allowed to violate a Rabbonon not to interrupt the Milish Mayinesra. Just pull a play him. The Rajbi is saying, he doesn't say these words, but he's definitely implying that the Hete is the Fnei Melech, you don't walk out. Even if it means concluding Shmaines with the Guf Anaki. Because it's an Nisit Rabbonon, and Chazal waved the Nisit Rabbonon the makim where it might result in stopping Shemayin Esra. So again, it's a chiddish nifla, but it's mainstream halacha, and no one argues. <clears throat> we could suggest that this concept is based on a befer shaposik. <clears throat> the Gemara in Yuma, that if you testament based darshan to dibar tabam, you should talk in the words of Krishna, v'loi betfila. And what did that mean? What's the contrast, Krishna and tefila? So Rashi learns, Krishna has to be la'aznav, and Shemayin Esra not. But Taisus is nearly bomb in Krishna Shoyal but may a year of Umeishiv, may I covered. By Krishna, you're allowed to respond in certain situations. V'loi betfila. But by davening, you're not to stop for anything. Kedarmina and Bebrach is laflamid, I feel a melech Shoyal b'shloimai. So you think about it, the Chayyot Taisus is saying that the concept, the Chaymer, <coughs> of the Fnei HaMelech that makes it more than Krishna is a, a Pasuk. And I'm not saying it's, it's one of the Tariyak Mitzvahs, but it's definitely an Asmachta, a reference that, that Shmei Nesra is more Chama than Krishna. Pillar Ployim. The Bar Tabam, you'll have to talk during Krishna, not during Shmei Nesra. <clears throat> now, we're going to use that very much. But before we apply this more specifically, I should mention a different Rajba. The Rajba is an Aleph Reish Sad Gimel. Someone asked the Rajba, let's say it's Rish um, Chodesh tonight, or the starting St. Talmud Levrocha tonight. Should the Gabbai clap eyes by Mayriv and say, Yala V'yavoy, or St. Talmud Levrocha. So the Rajba says, even though he's talking Ben Gula Latvila, but since it's a Tzorach, he's allowed to talk. So here we see, regarding Shemayin Esra, you're allowed to talk with Tzorach. Is that a steer what he said till now? Obviously not. Why not? Because there, it's talk of the importance smich has gula tefila, but he didn't start shmanesra yet. That's where he allowed to talk. But once he started shmanesra, he's oimed lefnei hamelach, and it's all over. Unless something we'll soon see has a special heta, nothing goes during shmanesra. <clears throat> I hope it's clear that this lefnei hamelach has a big impact in halacha. We were zayicha to watch our Moshe Feinstein daven many times, and you saw a picture perfect oimed lefnei hamelach. He didn't move. His moidim was a very pronounced moidim. 
and he once explained where he got the, his attitude to davening. He was once summoned to the KGB headquarters, and usually it was a one-way trip. He didn't come out alive, or he didn't end up home. He ended up someplace in Siberia. And he felt a, a tremendous pachad, because this might be his last time he's staying in a city. And he was freed, but it bothered him afterwards. I have such a pachad for mere mortals. And he was macabre to start applying that pachad to Shemayin Esra. <clears throat> so Lamaisa, let's just conclude this part. Shechon Aruch Tzadikei, Seed Gimel, we should do as, as best as we can. Oymid Ke'evad of Rabbi, Be'ema, Be'yera Uba Pachad. And that's why I saw the Birchas Habayis says in, in Klal Mem, Sif Hei, Lechat Chila, don't do anything during davening. You know, sometimes the person has a little of an itch, ignore it. You know, if as long as you'll survive without it, without itching, you know, Ilafei HaMelech, yawning, certainly wrong, burping, I mean, that's a fair Shabbat grad. But Lefnei HaMelech, even if it's not a hefsik proper, but there has to be a certain attitude, Lefnei HaMelech, nothing goes. Now let's apply this specifically. <clears throat> what should a person do if he finds the place where he's davening is disturbing? People are talking and he tries, making a, making a, a snort, a noise, and they, they're ignoring him. So it's, it, it's surprising, but the Mechab and Kuv Dal at Siv Gimel, based on Rebbeinu Yoyna, that if a person feels he cannot daven where he is right now, let him walk away. Zog the Magen Avram in Sif Katan Gimel Shabur quotes him that Alicha essentially is not a hefsek in Shemana Esra. So it's better than talking would be to walk away. And this Allah Chalamais. V'yim Taima, to us it sounds unthinkable. You're allowed to walk away during Shemana Esra? Why don't you say quiet? The teretz is v'dibar tabam. <clears throat> Since the, the source of the l'chayra, of the awasugi is v'dibar tabam v'loi b'tfila, talking is absolutely unacceptable. Halicha, think about it, halicha is not really a great stira to l'chayra Because in Hilchas brachas you have shini makayim. Because you, you were here, now you're there. But m'loi chalar is kvayt, the barasham is all over. You're walking from place A l'chayra melech to place B l'chayra melech, to guarantee you could have kavana. And that's why halicha, when there's no other choice, halicha is, believe it or not, the first solution. If you, people are talking and they're, not, and they're not getting any better, walk away. Now that might be a very dramatic statement, hopefully they get the hint, he started walking, but that's halacha. <clears throat> the next question I wanted, I once saw this, I was not davening obviously, but someone obviously made up a deal that his friend's gonna take him home after mincha, but the person came late, so he started Shemanesh at the end of Chedor Shashat. That was one mistake. And then he wanted to make sure his friend doesn't leave without him, so he turns around, and he makes like, you know, in Eretz Yisrael, like a rega with his fingers. He didn't talk. But he made it with his fingers that talks volumes like, don't you leave without me. You know, wait for me. So the question is, a non-verbal communication. So the embassy is, technically you'll say, that's not a violation of the Bar Tabam. He didn't say anything, but it's just as bad. You're communicating during Shemayin Esther. The Mechaba says in Kuvdal and Aleph, which the Burr says it early in Tzadik Vav, Zayin, you can't make even non-verbal gestures during Shemayin Esther. It's just not proper, the Fnei HaMelech. But the question is, how about if it's a Tzorach? Lamashal, a child is carrying on, and you don't know what to do. Is Ramiz a mutab makam tsayrach? And we'll soon see, is saying, saying, sha or nu? Is that mutab? So here we come to an interesting point. Because l'chayra, a non-verbal communication, a gesture, is not a violation to bat the bum, just as inappropriate. So maybe if there's no other choice, a child is just uh, out of control, Maybe you could, you know, wave your finger like you're going to get it or something scary like that. <clears throat> so, Baruch Hashem, as we know, we have a Reich HaToyra. And let's see. The Chido and Birka Yosef Kuv Dalar Aleph quotes Maram Chaviv. Also, Ligor Befiv Betinik Hasoichik. After Matridai Betfilosai. The child is playing. You're not allowed to scream at him and say a word or two. Quiet even though it's bothering you. Now this is not a Chiddush. This is the Gemara, V'dibar tabam v'loi b'tfila. 
So once you're talking, talking is unacceptable. But zok the birkei yosef in the next sif in sif cotton bays. But it's mutter the ram is biyadoi vishiyashtik atinik maram hanal. In other words, talking is absolutely asa, but motioning with, with a very threatening finger motion is okay. Oh, for us, it's beautiful because moving fingers is not not a violation of the bomb. But the chidah does add. If Lamaisi tried with his non-verbal gestures and it doesn't work, and unfortunately when, peop- when adults talk, they don't get scared by your finger. <laughs> they go weiter. Then, walk away. <clears throat> That's b- basically a machab and shulchan aruch based on Rabbeinu Yoyna. Rabbeinu Yoyna said it regarding the snake. If you push it, can't dive on the snake on your foot, just walk away and like shake it off. <clears throat> so here we see something very logical. That if a person is disturbed, let him make a motion. The Shara Tshuva now with Simon Kuvdal Tzivkot Nalav said, have a, be- have a better marshal. Let's say a Choshevayid comes to Shul, and he's not really the Rav, but they want to wait for him for And he hops that they're waiting for him, and he davens along Shemayin Esra. And now he's a, uh, there's no to do. So says the Shara Tshuva, based on the Chida, it makes sense, he could turn, turn to the Baltfila and wave him on, or bang on the table, bang the stender, but he can make a non-verbal communication that don't wait for me. <clears throat> no. Sounds logical. Because don't forget, we don't do anything during Shemayin Esra. But right now you're having no kavana, and that's not good, Lufnei HaMelech. So it's ba- basically the lesser of two evils. Comes again to Arach and Sif Aleph, and he quotes this, this Chiddush, and he says, how could you say that? It doesn't make sense. I need Tomo Oidal there. Even in the first parish in Krishna, you can't be Miramas. It's only in the rest of Krishna. Kavachayim b'shmayin Esra. Ah, he says, Tzorich Tfila, but that's not a heta. So what should he do? The child is pulling on him, kicking him, biting him. You know, he wants his lollipop. So, Tzorich HaShulchan, very, to me, mystic. Yizchazik b'tfilase. Just keep on davening. Umen HaShemayim Yazru. The Baruch HaShemayim what that means, I'm not sure, but just don't worry, you can't interrupt. You can't even shake your finger at the child. Aye, the second Shaila, the Tercha, the Tzibura, and the Rav is, 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 is the Chashavid, it does not have the Kavona, so be Makatsa. But you can't do anything during Shemay Nesra. And I'm sure you realize this Aruch HaShulchan, the Shittasai, he that understood the Oymik of the Fnei Melech, so gesturing is awesome. I, what's the Eitzah? I don't know, but no, no gesturing during Shemayin Esra. Avad the coin to Abshleim Ekluga. This is a problem also. It's almost Yerag Vayavah. Maybe even gesturing. Lamaisa Bar Hashem for us, the Shari Tshuva is Mekel, and the Mishtabur and Kuvdal and Aleph is Mekel in both Sveikas. One, if the child is disturbing, you're allowed to motion. And number two, if they're waiting for you, you're allowed to motion them on to go on. Now, the Emes is the Kasha, the Archa Shulchan is, I, Krishma, the Raisa, the first, pos- the first parasha, you're not allowed to be Miramis. So, Teretz is the Chardas Pashat. Because there, the question is, am I a mensch? Am I going to respond to a Chashaviyid, to a king, whatever it is? So, then we'll say, now is not a time to be responsive. Now you've got to daven. Forget about that prominent person. But here, your Shemaynesh is being threatened. You can't have Kavana. You're, you're, the child is disturbing you. So it's a tzorich tefillah might be better in the case of shayla meish ne'a kavit. You know, it's nice to have kavit for Eden. But now, the first p- p- part of Krishna, but in Shemayin Esra, you have to think about bari oilam and nothing else. So that's basically the Yisoyed. If it's disturbing your davening, then you're allowed to be miramis. Now, the next question is sha or nu. Now, I don't know. I didn't look in the dictionary. I don't know if there's such a word. But it has a lot of meaning. <clears throat> So the question is, is saying Sha'anu as mutta as remiza? So until today you would say, what's the chilaka? Just a three-letter word, two-letter word. But now that we know it's the focus is the barta bomb, maybe Sha'anu is worse than walking away. So one thing is clear. A hefsik is even a two-letter word. The Bialocha says it in Chof Hei Tes, even saying Amen, a three-letter word is a hefsik. The word no or ya is definitely a hefsik, even though it's two letters, it's a word. The question is, Sha Onu. So, first of all, I think Sha Onu is a pretty acknowledged word. 
but more so, even if it's not a word te- technically, but it's still v'dibartaba, you are pronouncing the word sha'anu. <clears throat> and again, we could say we have a raicha Torah. Let's learn a Gemara in Rosh Hashanah, Lamadal, and Abayi, that has l'chari no shaychas to anything, but has many, much shaychas to our sugya. Zokti Gemara, Papa, on Rosh Hashanah, obviously he dava nusach svard, but he was davening Musaf, and he was waiting, he they told the, the shamas that, that blew the shayfa during the Shtilash Ben Esra, ki nahirna, Moza Agar is ki nahirna lecha, when I will snort, I'll make a sound with my mouth, you know I finish my, my, my Shman Esra, that part of Shman Esra, and blow the shayfa. He wanted to synchronize the kiyas that were coming right after he finished the bracha. Nechirna is, a, is not, a, not a word. It's a, he, he uses his, his mouth or nose to make a noise. So it was a sound, but it wasn't a, just a, a flick of the finger. The Bermoish and Chay, the Gimel Yud Beis, has a shayla. When children or adults, he writes, which he writes even worse, are disturbing. <clears throat> So, to make a loud snort or like, you know, something like, again, so that, that's like, like huh, just to start them, is okay. Yes, the Raya Tzuma is Muta. What's the Raya Tzuma? Rosh Hashanah Lama Dez, Lama Beis. Because there, it seems, he, was, he snorted to catch the attention of his Shamas. He said, I found the Machzik Bracha, the Taka Yesh Lasa is Tnuah Bekoil Ashtikam. He says, you're allowed to make a noise to quiet down the people. V'yashlavi raya. He brings a raya from Rosh Hashanah. <coughs> but the Tepetina Rosh was very disappointed. At the end, he writes, V'yash litchois. I don't know what's V'yash litchois. Because if you're allowed to do it during Rosh Hashanah, most of, even though it's not ma'akif to blow punk when you, when you get to the end of it. Koshkin, if you can't, daven. So it seems to be that he holds that taka lamaisa, it's a good raya. If there's noise, you'll have to make a non-verbal sound. A coil. The chesed la'alofim, that's the peleyoyitz, and kuv da'alad, da'alad, the ben eshchai, shana alf, mishpatim, kavachayim, and gimel, all quote is la'alofim. So again, sh- to make a noise, a, st- a sudden, like, like a loud noise, that's okay. But then I saw in the safe, Hilchas yoyim yoyim, the chayla gimel, it's beginning of Perikot Alf, it's a Moshim Bat he points out that in the new print of Machzik Bracha, of the Chidah, it says beferish that you're allowed to make a motion, but ain't liga b'klal b'koil that ramas koil choshev dibor. Now this chida is quoting the Maram ben Chaviv, which is the makar of our halacha. They reprinted it recently. It's a beautiful new print. But there in the Maram ben Chaviv, that's the makar of it. He says it's only muta to make no sounds. Just move your hands. No, that's what he says. But I'm telling you what I saw. Ches lalafim ben eshchai kafachayim. And the Debetzina Rav say, to make a, a sudden sound would be mutter. But what's also obvious, that a sound is mutter. But sha or nu, which have meaning and seem to be words, that's taka problem. Oh, I'm going to get there. Debetzina Rav Taka says, the best aces make a, a, a sudden bang on the stender that will shake them out of their, you know, out of their talking. But I should mention the Birchas Habayis in, in, in Klal Lamad Ches Sif Hei. He says, don't say Sha or, or actually, obviously no, don't do it during davening. But Mashmiya Koil Ba'alma Boloi Chitach Oisius, that's okay. So I think we could say Taka to make a, 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 a sound without words is okay. Sha or no should be avoided. So Yanka Fisher also said, whenever there's an Issa of Dibor, he's, his marshal is no, is a Dibor. <coughs> Maybe a riot to this is interesting, Magan Avram. Magan Avram, in the beginning of Tzadik Ches, says if someone quotes a Seif Hagan from an earlier Paisik, I guess a Makubal also, if someone is, has Machshavas Roy's during davening, the Eitz is to say P, P, P three times. Pe Yud is Rosh Hashanah's Palti and Yosef, both extraordinary people that were oimed in a tremendous Nesoyen. So apparently saying the word P, Palti and Yosef, three times, shakes you out of the Nesoyen of Machshavah's Zorah's during Shemayin Esther. As I say in Seif Hagan, so Tumag and Avram, I don't think it's a good idea, because it's a hefsik. So even though P is not a word, but Lechari, you see Tumag and Avram, it's a hefsik. 
but it's not really a raya because there you're not just saying uh, like new asha, you're saying a whole chant p p p three times also the fact that the rasha tev is of two names maybe is worse i can't say it's a raya but definitely we saw that a sound is okay a bang is okay but sha or new is a problem now one point I must mention, at least I see it too often, and that people started communicating, especially during Meir, the first part of Meir, we see it too often, that's called in English, they mouth the words. They don't want to talk, so they go next to their friend, they get his attention, and they start mouthing the words, you know, pronouncing the words, but you can't hear it. That's called an Allah, a chituch svasav. You can almost see them saying, wait for me, but they don't, there's no sound. Their assumption is, that it's not a hefsik. Now, I don't think they thought about this whole share, but maybe if they could be alarmed, then they'll say, well, the, the problem is making noise. You know, sha, no, but this is not noise. There's no sound of it. But it's, it's a terrible mistake. In Perik Zayin, Sif Yud, he says that just what we call mouthing the words in English, but in Halach it's called chitach svasav. If you do that in Krishna, you yoytza. It's not a chitchila. It's supposed to be Shmiel Oznav, but B'diyavet, if you said the words without hearing it, you yoytze Krishna. So if you yoytze Krishna with this type of um, motioning, about it's a hefsik. In fact, according to Mekubalim, Shmanes is supposed to be just that. Chitach Svasav, it shouldn't be heard at all. So this is a terrible hefsik that has to stop. It might not be Vidibarta Bum because you don't hear it, but it's still Vidibarta Bum because you're pronouncing it. <coughs> okay. Now let's go further. Someone is Milosh Benesra, he left out uh, Mashiv Aruch. He's not a big Tamachacham, obviously. And he's holding with Kapa Shoifa. What does he do? Go back to the beginning, uh, put in the Shemakal. And he doesn't know, he's clueless. Zog Techayodam. In Chaf Heites, this Shaila. So he says, nearly, you could, if you don't know Halacha, but you know where to look it up, and you don't have the Sederm of today that have the halachas in the back. <coughs> You're allowed to walk to the back, or the swar, wherever the Tzvarm Shang is, take out a Sefer and look up what to do. And he brings L'chayel, a Shtar Karaya, because it says in, in, in Shulchan Aruch, if a child, pardon me, didn't have diapers and he soiled the area, so you, you, allowed, you, you have to walk away. You can't have it with the soya or, or the like. So he's saying, if you don't know what to do, you're allowed to walk to the Tzvarm Shang and look it up. Then he says, if let's say you're not a Tamachacham, you don't know which chalik of Mishtabur is Hilchas Tefillah. It's not going to help. In Mutalishal Hadin, can you go over to the Rav, who's davening, and say, excuse me, what do I do? Tzarechiyan, venera li de muta. And I think it's muta. I, I think the person that does this is a Tzarechiyan. Go over to the Rav, middle davening, and ask him a shayla. But Lechari, this is what he wants to say. Now, this already is challenging. The first halacha moving to the back, that we saw already, Ben Yoyin says, Magan Ram says, halicha is not a hefsik. But talking? So he has two rayas. In Nishmas Avram on the bottom, he has two rayas. Nishmas Adam, sorry, which is on, on the, on the Chayodim. The first raya is that you allow, after you make hamoitzi, before you ate a drop of the challah, you allow to say, oh, bring the salt to feed the animals. Now, you're talking in the worst time between bracha and achila. Evidently, if it's a tzoyrech of the bracha, it's not a hefsik. So that's why it's mutta. So tiny the chayodim here also, you, you probably don't know what to do. What do you expect to do? Stand until Mashiach comes? So it's a talking litzoyrech. Talking litzoyrech is not a hefsik, and therefore not a problem. Then he has a second ray. Listen to this. The, he quotes the, early in his safe, he quotes the ritva. Let's say a person is mul of davening, and he left them Asher Ruach, he's certain. But he's holding Baruch Ato Hashem, and didn't say Mechaya Meisim yet. What does he do now? If he concludes the bracha, he has to go back to the beginning of Shem Esra. If he doesn't, and just goes back, he could just start from At the Gibar. But he's holding Baruch Ato Hashem. So the, this, the Ritva says, Lamdeni Chukecha, and go back to At the Gibar. So you say, repeating a full bracha. Is a nice pasuk and tell him. We had to finish my nestra. So apparently, to avoid a brachal of atala, you'll have to make a hefsik. 
Here also you had to make a hefsik to avoid a bracha What are you going to do? So he says, basically, this chiddush nearly the muta. I lemaisa v'dibarta bom. He doesn't address that. The teretz is that's good, ideally. But what should this man do? He's standing and davening. He doesn't know what to do. So stam go vaita and make brachos lavatola maybe. So this is mamish a no-win situation. As I fashteich what the chayyadam holds. If he's stuck, then he has to get out of the trouble and even talk if need be. Now, here we come to something fascinating. Rabbi Shleim Kluga, besides, he was a prolific writer, Bechlal, but besides Chach Shleim, he wrote a tshuva sefer, one of the many, El Shleim. In Simon Nun, someone told him that the Chayodim says a Chiddush, that Baruch Hashem, he only told him the first Chiddush, that you're allowed to go to the Psvarm Shank and look up a sefer. Now, he didn't see the Chayodim. So he says, he said that, Chas V'Shem Lasis came. Now I'll do that. He says, we'll soon see that even if the talus falls off, you have to leave it. But how do you turn your back to Bari Oilam? Chalila Lasis came, for the second time. Ah, you told me the Chayodim is Mater? If it's true that he's Mater, I don't believe it. But if it's true, Chalila Lisma Chalav. So he throws three Chalilas at you. Now, this is a real Ashitase. To him, Interrupting Shmei Nesser was almost Yorg Valyavar. But to take a stroll to the back and open a Mishnebura, unthinkable. Okay, so three Chalilas I understand. What does the Epshleim Kluga suppose we do? You're standing there, you have no idea what to do. That's not, that doesn't bother him. But what you don't do is you don't interrupt Shmei Nesser. That's what you have to say. Now again, Baruch Hashem, they didn't write to him. The second Chiddush, that you're allowed to talk to the Rav, otherwise he wouldn't be able to survive that. But again, the point I think is beautiful. He doesn't give you an option, but he knows one thing. Moving during Shemai Nesha and looking up a Sefer is not an option. Now, he doesn't argue on the, on the, on the Ramah, the Rabbein Yoyinah, because walking away is okay. Walking to the back is okay. But taking out a safe and start looking it up, that's the biggest theory of Tlifnei HaMelech. <clears throat> now, could be he would hold, I, I saw the Pnei even says this, in a different context, Finish my Nesra and, and make it a Suffolk, to, a Suffolk uh, Nadova. If I'm at Yaitz, it'll be a Nadova. So it's a Gansa Chalant. You have to make the first part was a Bracha, second part is a Nadova. But the, the, the attitude is priceless. Oh. But then I saw a different Godel, Talmud of Briskarov, Amik Bracha in Tfila Aleph. He also quotes the Chayodam, and near a Bara, the Ena Din came. But he has a very beautiful approach. And he says that to, to, to look up a Sefer, you're doing something else during Shemay Nesra. It's not just you're walking around, you're doing something else. And again, if I, I'm partly being graphic, but I think it's true. If you're talking to the Bari Oilam and you just move away to, to talk better, it's not a problem. But you talk to the Bari Oilam and you take out a Sefer, you're doing an action that's not Shemay Nesra. That, that's like Kaviochel hanging up on Bari Oilam. You, you, you finish the conversation. But then he adds, this is a beautiful taina. He says, I, the Ritva says, you're allowed to say, I, that's the Hefzik in Shemayin Esra. He says, it might be a Pasuk Tilim, but at least you're still talking to Bari Oilam. You're saying, Mogan Avram, which is strange, but you didn't hang up on Bari Oilam. When you go and talk to someone else, you're talking to someone else. So in Bari Oilam, I got to talk to Rav. Hold on a second, please. That's the Avla. And again, you see it almost, you could hear in his words, that this is hanging up on Bar Oilam and talking to someone else. Now, this is the easy part. To, to explain the, the, this machlaikis is very easy. What do we do, Lamaisa? He's trying Khalila, and he's saying, just walk to the back or talk to the rub. So again, I can only say the Mishtabura in Kuvdalet, Beis, is Mekel, quoting the Chayodim in both halachas. I would imagine that if it's a suffix that you know is not Ma'akiv, then don't walk to the back and don't talk to the Rav. Just go weiter. Right. Again, you, you're not sure what to do, but either way you do it is not ma'akiv, then you can take the liberty of saying it's going it's to have to be what it is and gave weiter. Right. <clears throat> but no doubt about it, the best aids, of course, is to know halacha, and then you don't have these fakers. Next question is sometimes a common shayla. We spoke about dibur, about shanu, which is a quasi dibur, halicha, and gesturing. My next question is doing a maisa. I'll give you a simple, a simple example. A person is davening and talus fell off his shoulders. It's on the floor. He doesn't have to talk to anybody, no shan, no nu, no walking. He has to pick up the talus, bend down, 
and put it on. In Allah, that's called a etifa, right? He's putting on a talus. On, on such an action, you make a brach, even if you don't throw it over your head. That's an atifa. So the question is, maybe that's mutta because you need a dab with a talus. <clears throat> the good news is, I could even say a better svar why it's mutta. If the whole problem is with the barta bomb, this is not a violation of the barta bomb. You're not talking. I mean, he's doing something significant, but he's not talking. So the question is, am I sagam or is it okay? <clears throat> so again, we could say, that walking away from a, a disturbing area is maybe part of davening. But doing a different maisa, putting on talis, maybe tak it's worse. Or maybe it's a tzarech tefillah. So again, we have a reich Torah. In Brachis, so at the end of Chav Dalid, Rab Chanina said, I saw Rebbe, and he said a few maisa rab. One of them was, Memash meish bivigodov, avaloi hai misatev. He's epis moved his begadim, but he didn't put it up, didn't make an atifa. So Rashi learns there are two halachas here. Mimashri begadav means if there was a louse, lice, on his baguette, he wouldn't flick it off with his finger, because then his hand would become dirty, halachically dirty, and have to wash his hands during davening, which you can't do. So he shook his baguette to get off the louse. But if the talus fell off, he wouldn't put it on. Why? Because that's a hefsik. <clears throat> so Rashi's learning of the Ferris Shikimara that flicking a la shaking the begot and shake off a laos is okay. Putting on a talus is a hefsik. What's the pshat? Posh it. It's a maisa gomor. Toysvis learns the whole gomor is one halacha. That mamash begot, they mean, let's say the talus didn't fall off on the ground. Uh, one shoulder fell off partially. It's not organized, whatever. So you'll have to correct it during Shmanesra. Because just correcting the talus is not a hefsik. But if it fell off, and you have to be misat of it, it's also. So either pshat agree, both pshat, I should say, agree, putting on a talus on the, the fell off is also. <clears throat> Why? Because that's a ma'isa gomma, that's a ma'isa tifa. So here we have a rai from a gemara to our question. <clears throat> and this is all in Sadiq Zayin, Gimel, Mechaba speaks about a allows on the body, you're allowed to shake it off with the jacket. In Siv Dalit, he says, if the talus partially fell off, you could straighten it out. Totally fell off, it's a hefsik. Now, I would imagine if the talus fell off partially, it's a, it's a maisa kal, I'll call it. Not a maisa goma. That's why it's mutta. And takisi, people uh, during Shmanes are almost, uh, almost impulsively, they, fit, they straighten the talus. Now, avada and avada, like I told you earlier, Everything should be done before Shemayin Esther. Straighten the talus out, and if you have a guard, they'll tuck in your guard. Whatever you want, just avoid any distraction. But we see a chilek between a talus, a eat of talus, and of course a partially. Now when I say eat of, I don't mean making the whole atif shishma'elam. I mean pick, picking it up and putting it on. That's a ma'isa gomor. <clears throat> but then we have another rishon. Actually, this is a, not, this is not a gemara, it's a rishon that says a, 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 another concept that we have to really work, work together with the talus. And that's the Sefer Chassidim in Tov Shin Ayin Zayin. And again, it's something hard for us to even relate to. But enough of a mispal of enough of a for he dropped the Siddha, and assuming he could die without the Siddha. But Lamaisa, a Siddha's on the floor. So he says, if not the Daita, if some agar is nitcher for Daita, he's losing his mind, a Siddha on the floor, how could he leave it? Then, you have no choice. You're not davening. Pick it up. But better would be first finish the bracha and then pick it up. Bein bracha le bracha. But in mispal be kavana al yagbi a seif v'shu al aretz kem mispal be kavana noichel olam haba. He's giving a very tempting bracha that if you could daven kavana and not pick it up lechayra, don't pick it up. So we see two concepts. First of all, even to sit on the floor, the way to do it is leave it. But if you can't, so you're not, you know, Lefnei HaMelech, don't bend down and pick up a sefer. But then again, Lefnei HaMelech, don't stand there and dive without kavana. You're so distracted about the siddha. <clears throat> so he's saying, basically, ideally leave it. If there's no choice, nitra daite, nitra daite, that's a bit of a strong description, pick it up. Bein bracha lebracha. <clears throat> now, lemaisa, about nefesh, which I once heard a beautiful title, Baal Nefesh means he's a bailam on his nefesh. He's a bailam on his frumkite. A Baal Nefesh will say, I know it's uncomfortable, but that's not the right thing. 
he will continue davening. Okay, my Yom Rebriya says a different issue, but he'll leave it on the floor. <clears throat> in other words, we'll quote the Gemara in Sukkot of Chafei Mebeiz, Iboy Lesuvei Daite. Just get your act together and realize this is the Ratzon Hashem, finish my Nesr. Now, Lemaise, if it's not happening, you're allowed to pick it up. I must mention the Magan Avram, Tzadik Vav, and the Mishtabur and Simon Tzadik Vav, quote very briefly, Nafal Seif Alvan Al Aretz, and he can't be Mechavin, Pick it up when you finish the bracha. So they don't really seem to say the first half, that the second half, leave it there, you I don't know why. Maybe they felt no one's going to do it because it's too hard. But no doubt about it, ideally, leave the siddur on the floor. But if you think that's a chiddush, Zokhtar HaShulchan and Sadik Zai and Vav, Nafal Talisoy and Gansin, leave it there. Zokhtar HaShulchan, Hu Adin, I don't know how this happened, but I stopped asking a long time ago how things happened. This man dropped his tefill and shall yad and shall rise during Shemayin Esra. I don't know how it happened. Because you need a Hanachas tefillin. That's a Ma'isa Gama. Now which person is right mind would just leave tefillin on the floor and down without tefillin? I don't know. It's a friendly reminder what Lefei Melech is all about. At least in ideal, leave tefillin on the floor. Forget about a talus or a siddha. Tefillin. I guess lefnei melech requires more than we think. Now the question is common. Let's say a person is davening and dropped his talus. So Allah is clear. It's a ferish gemara. Rashi and Taisis. But he's an el tezeda, and he's davening shmei nesra without a hat, without a talus. Uh, people looking at him like, you know, aren't you married? Like, what's with you? And he's so mavulable that he just can't go on. So this to me was a, a very uh, surprising, I should say. Because no one says you'll have to bend down and pick it up. Even if nitra for daita, you know what the pshat is? Because this is a Gemara already. Who said you'll have to override a Gemara? The case of the Sid that was the Sefer the, 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 the Chsidim's Chidim, so he could say, if you have no choice, pick it up. But how can you override a Gemara? But Reiz Apella, the Rav in Sadiq Zai and Dalit, he says, if the, if, if the Talas fall off entirely, you had to have sick. And then he puts in parentheses, the end of Tzadik Vav. Now that's beautiful. The Rav is saying, just like you, if, you, if the sit is on the floor and you can't daven, you'll have to pick it up. So who are the talus? Now, what are you supposed to do? You can't get your act. You can't go on daven without a talus. So, you gonna pick it up during Shemay Nesra and put it on. Now, if you notice, he puts in parentheses. The Rav, Derech was, we had a suffix, he put into parentheses. You know what the suffix is? Who said you, you have this far overrides the Gemara? And the embassy said, Ferish Gemara. Had it been so true, so someone should have said, but if you can't dive in, which most people can't dive in without a talus on them, no hat, no talus, it's um, um, unbearable. So maybe he had a suffix. But the Mishtabura quotes it in Sadiq Zayin, Tezayin, and no parentheses. And he says, Hagraz, Velamad from Tzadik Vov. So again, I do think there's a big makam lechalik, and the Rav certainly implied that there's no makam lechalik. But Mishbur is our paisik. If a talus falls down and you can't concentrate, pick it up and put it on. Of course, no brach is said, but I would mention if someone already davened and he sees someone in this dilemma, it's a great chesed. You should know whether it's tefillin, if it ever happens, talus, sefer. If you're not davening and something happens to someone during davening, try to alleviate his problem. Pick up the talus, put it on him. That would be a great chesed, but basically, if there's no one around and he can't daven as is, the best aid is pick it up and put it on. In this case, and all case, I should mention that you're supposed to finish the bracha and pick it up, bein bracha le bracha, like the Sefer Chsidim says. So you see, we, we have a Gemara, we have a Sefer Chsidim, and we merge the two to give us guidance. Question. Someone is certain that his tefillin moved off its mark. Now it's not the Bainin Echetz, it's too much to the left or right. So now it's like Munach Bekbekisai. Can he adjust it during the avening? So I, saw, I found this beautiful. The Rechashulchan says, about the allowed to. The holiday is why? Because this is like, not like a talus that fell off entirely. This is an adjustment. And the Gemara says, according to Toysvis, you'll have to adjust the talus. And this is adjusting tefillin, so no difference adjusting talus or tefillin. Now, of course, not to look in the mirror because he ends up uh, looking at other things. Uh, so just adjust the tefillin and gave it. <clears throat> now, question. Someone started davening and there was a window open and he's very sensitive to the cold 
and it's Pashi, he, he can't go on davening. I mean, he could, but he's just distracted. So if he's right next to the window, really that would be a Maisa, I want Maisa go, Maisa Kal, which should not, should not be done initially, but if it's disturbing him, you ought to close the window. If someone's talking outside, they're making a lot of noise and he can't concentrate, again, if he can't go on as is, close the window. Putting on a gartel during Shmei Nesra, L'chaira, is not the right thing. You put it on before, it's wonderful. But if you're not to put on a talis, or tefillin for that matter, leave it on the floor better. So again, put it on before, but L'chaira during Shmei Nesra does not seem to be the right thing. And we always mention, and Itaka is... It should be mentioned, people come running into Mincha typically late, late as it is, but they want to join Tefillah Batiba. So you can watch it. it it's, it's not funny. It's sad. They, first, they make the three steps and start davening. Then they start looking for a siddha, closing the jacket, putting on the garital. So by Mug and Avram, they did everything but davened. They say the bracha, but no kavana, lefnei amelech. So that has to stop without a doubt. Next, Maisha Shehoya, Two stories, someone double parked, okay, that was one avla, and then someone innocent did not know who double parked, but came in and just made an announcement, don't ask you why, most Manestra, they're giving tickets for double parked. So the fellow that was davening had a dilemma, because he's not a great uh, osher, and if it's, I don't know if he's ticketed, told, I don't know, but for him, he felt it might be a hefzid miruba. Can he do something during Shemayin Esra to have the car move? I don't know what he was thinking, but that's the problem. These people don't think, so you can't know what he's thinking. So, and let me just tell you the halach. The Magen Avram and Kuv Dalar Aleph says that if you're not allowed to interrupt for even a melech, so that even half sit is awesome. Zok the prima godim, but maybe if it's more than a chaymish nechasim, you're allowed to interrupt because we find the Gemara in, 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 in Sukkah, in Shulchan Aruch, that you're not But then he says no. And that's the way the Kavachayim explains that Shmai Nesra could be even Koma Mainai. Because Shmai Nesra has this unique feature of Lufnei HaMelech. So it's more than any assay. So obviously moving cars or arranging cars, giving keys are absolutely unacceptable. Now, Lemaisa. If it's almost Yaharag Val Yavor, Avad, it should not be done. That's Basha. Now, someone asked me, Bechlal, about these halachas, do they apply when I'm home alone and no one's there? Now, I don't know what he was thinking, but he wasn't thinking. You're not home alone. You're home with Bari Yohilam. That's the same, Lefnei Melech Malachi Amloch. Now, maybe it's not a Chil Hashem, Rabbi Shlaim Beklug is Chil Hashem, because no one's there. But it's still a Chil Hashem for Bari Yohilam. Rav Ozna has a shayl in Chayla Gud, Reishlin Beis. A, a, a Tzala member got a call that was not life-threatening. Someone got hurt. It's not Pekuch Nefesh. And he's Mil Shemayin Esra, and he heard the call. Should he respond? So he says very clearly that based on the Gemara in Baruch Islam at Beis, he quotes the Smag that the Magan Avram quotes, anything absent, Tzakonis Nefashas, you can't interrupt Shemayin Esra. So although he wants to do a chesed, leave the call for someone else. <clears throat> Someone, this is a summer shayla, a person's davening, and there's a fly, a mosquito, and annoying him. So here we have to have a little iboyla suve daite. If that bothers you, think about if there's a snake on your heel, what do you do? You leave it. So leave the harmless fly or, or, or moth, even a mosquito, if you don't you know, bother, it doesn't bother you. Now, the Kavachayim, if you've caught your tchess, right? If Lamaisa, 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 you can't daven. You're so terrified. I don't know why. I mean, this is, you're a million times bigger than that mosquito. But if you can't daven, so you're not davening, so, Hechel, you're gonna. But that shouldn't happen. Now, the Ches Lalofim, that I mentioned earlier in Kuv Dalet Gimel, Ashrei Ish Yari Es Hashem, Ve'oyev Oisei, Ve'dovek Boi, Le'isuna Alav Ro'o, Yeshalem, Ve'chele Shavra Ba'in Oisei. You're not talking about our Shaila, but I think his message is when you're talking to Bari Oilam, you are in the safest situation. Don't worry about a mosquito. Nothing will happen. Now, again, if a person's terrified, he's a pachtim, he has an allergic reaction. So if you can't daven, you can't daven. Someone asked me, he learned halacha, and he says, he came out, you're not allowed to blow your nose during Shemayin Esther. They told him, you're right and you're wrong. He's right that Mechabah says in Sadiq Bey's Gimel, before you start Shemayin Esther, uh, prepare. Blow your nose, uh, clear your throat. In other words, daven, put on your talus, and mm. soar with the gedula of Lefnei HaMelech. So that's why you shouldn't do it during Shemayin Esra. But let's say there's a sudden need. So here, he, when he, misled the, he misread the halacha, in Sadiq Zayim Beis, it says that if a person has to have some phlegm, so be mavliya biksusa, spit it into your clothing. Now, he's an American boy, you're not spitting into his clothing. But he learned the sugya right. 
Because the Machab is based on a Gemara that typically when a person had phlegm in the olden days, they spit out on the ground. But you know how to spit the phlegm melech. So what do you do? Like just get, merge it into your clothing. But today we have a simple etzah. It's called a tissue. The shuls give tissues. No, it's a, not a din in, in, in Ksusai. It's a din, don't spit. So don't spit. But obviously this is okay. Or let's see in Memheya Chavzayin says in its Pasha. A child's disturbing. So we learned basically, you're not allowed to talk. You're allowed to either motion or walk away. But the best etzah, and this is Kedai to mention, to follow the Psaq of the Shla. The Shla writes, some people bring children to shul, litain oynish lemivyeyen. It's paraphrasing the, the Lashon of the Chazal. In other words, they're not getting schar for that, they're getting oynish. Why? The child they cannot, cannot cooperate the whole davening. But you want to be a good husband and bring your wife could sleep late, so you bring the child to shul. But we have to remind you, it's not a babysitting service because it's chav lachair. So the best aid is the children should not be brought to shul. If he's of age and he's somehow, somehow he's commanding, so we have the eights is uh, scare him, bang, and it need be walk away. Push it, I'm not going to even mention, but a cell phone go, should not be brought to Davish Shul. I see this too often, people, the phone rings, so they, they go slowly, they look. Maybe Habot, the Behefka, I don't know what they hold, they look. Then they are new, oh, and I once saw this, I'm not joking, Momin. <laughs> <laughs> as if that's a head to one word so this has to stop this is a, I'm afraid to say what El Yohanavi would do when he saw this when someone's down in Chari Beis Knesset, that was the end of him what would he do now I don't know we had a Shiloh during the summer the boys went on a trip and they were stuck whatever they daven outside and Punkt Mazel started to rain Milosh Esra so obviously if you could handle it finish Shmein Esra I mean once you're wet you're wet but if someone felt he couldn't do it so go in, what could you do? Halicha lo yavi hefsik. Someone asked me, I thought of a gewaldige chiddish during Shmein Esra. And he's a shtikalam, then he's afraid he's going to forget it. I told him, I tell you a story. Maybe ksiva lav kadiba. But this story written by Chaim Valaj and Abiksav Yad Kotchei, printed in the Safra, the Hagdom of the Safra, the Sneyusa. And the Goyen said, the Goyen told me, they showed me recently what, what, what davening is all about. The Goyen told him, this is, he's, he writes the story, Abiksav Yad Kotchei. But he heard me, Pekachi of the Goyen. The Goyen said, I spent 12 weeks on my life, of my life learning a, a, a shtickle zoya, but I couldn't figure it out. 12 weeks. That's uh, three months. Till, till Rosh Chodesh one day, during Shachar, I thought of seven Pshatim in the zoya. And the Goyen turns to Bechayim and says, What would you do? So Bechayim was quiet. He goes, I was Masadarit with his Goyenish mind. I, 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 I made it into a certain, like a, a way to remember it, maybe like the Sach, Adash, Bachav, something like that. Took me a rev a minute, 15 seconds. And I finished my Nesra, I forgot every last shot. Couldn't remember even one of them. So in my Muzga, he said, I couldn't daven halal. That wasn't basimcha. So I could daven halal. So I worked in it, I got very basimcha, I daven halal. It came Musif, again the seven shot them came to my mind. I ignored them, and after my Nesra, they were all waiting for me. That's Lefnei HaMelech. So that's why it's not, the, you know, the person thinks of something, I'll just write it down. Again, maybe Ksiv Alav Kadiba, but this is Lefnei HaMelech. The question that we began with, his friend's hat fell down. So if the friend is willing to daven as it is, so leave it. That's really the right thing. Again, we don't daven without a hat, but if you have no choice, now this is the time to do Lefnei HaMelech. If he's going to move anyhow, he's going to have to move, and you picking it up, and you notice it anyhow, maybe that's the, the chesed to pick it up for him question that we began with Koyin. I'm sorry, Yisrael, Davin by the wall, like he always does. Punkt, he forgot that they're duchening. And now the Kahanim are standing behind him. He's not in front of the Kahanim. So Moshin Chelik Dalid Chaf Aleph Beis writes, Poshit, he shouldn't move from his place. Now, I know why. Even though Halich is not a hefsik, but Lamaisa, in this case, you're still Bechal the Bracha. You're an Oynis Am Shebesadis. So even though Halich is Muta B'Shas Atchak, not Shas Atchak. Now, that's why the right thing is just stay where you are. Rav Moshin Chaylik, hey, Chof, Ois Chof Gimel, is Mekel to move, I'm not sure why, maybe he held that it's to get the bracha properly, maybe Duchening is part of Shmai Nesra, but it's definitely more Mustavro what he says originally. Rav Zalman and the Chazanish, both are quoted as saying what people do, they, they during Shmai Nesra, Yalav Yavay out loud. Is a, is, is a chasaran of covered atzibur, covered hamokim, and it's a chasaran of lefnei hamelech. You're talking to a king, you don't remind others what to say. Now, the Velt does it, obviously it's a tzairich. But again, the feeling is something to remember. 
And my last question is fascinating, but you see what it means if they have melech. Some, there's a mice to show you, someone is a diabetic and had a sudden need for some sweets. So people in this condition, they carry sweets at all time. The kids say his mazel happened during Shemayin Esra. So Avadi has to eat it, because nefesh. Does he make a bracha? In middle of La Mashin Malti Sikva, does he make a shakal on a piece of chocolate? So they asked Rabbi Yash, this is quoted in Nishmas Avram, Simon Kuv Dalid. Rabbi Yash said, he's already mufsak. Once he's eating, you know, Gemara says in Brachas Chav Dalid, if someone has to pass gas, so he passes gas, he says, uh, says a certain uh, tefillah, and goes back to Shemayin Esra, when it's, when it's coast is clear. Mm-hmm. I, how are you allowed to say a tefillah, middle of Shemayin Esra? Kfar Mufsik. So Yashiv held, once you're eating, it's Kfar Mufsik. But he quotes from the Rabbi Vaj Yosef, and others say, the Shev Kassi also says this, it's not true. He has to eat, ask his own to hate. But you can't make a bracha during Shemayin Esra. I have to eat without a bracha. So maybe it's like an oinen. Oinen eats without a bracha. I you now do an issa, but if there's no chiyah bracha, there's no issa. An oinen has no chiyah bracha, it's vaninus. So maybe lefnei amelach, there's no chiyah bracha. So es gezun to hate, but make a bracha. So again, we should all be gezun, but we should realize oim lefnei amelach is the greatest chos. I'm going to talk to you all. I'm going to give you right now the, the, the news. Shame Egan Shirtel, like we give a big yes character of Smith for today's share. To have the great list of sponsoring a share, call Egan Shirtel, 718 851 8651, email ist to shivanet.com. That's from after the Kaddish for Smith for the Seekum. When I'm going to cash him, I'm going to go to the Zakas, it's sort of him to turn a Mitchell Shanema, and the Nech Office of Mansidka Yagdal Terriade. First, we want to keep the half sick between the shear and the sikkim to a minimum. Okay, sikkim and half sick and spinach. Okay, just uh, just chazor. We learned today, Bez Hashem, the unique feature of davening the fnei amelach is a schus nifla otzum, but basically it impacts halach in a big way. Basically, even if tefillas the rabbanon, it's definitely more chama than krishma because it's lefnei amelach. According to some, based on the gemara, it's it's almost a yarg vayavar. And unless there's no other Eitzah, nothing should take place. Not talking, not Shanu, not Remiza, not gesturing, nothing. Totally Kulay Lefnei Hashem. This is probably based on the concept that Tefillah is more than any other mitzvah. Dibur has a specific Issa, V'dibar Tabam, V'loi B'Krishma, V'loi B'Tefillah. And that's why Dibur is the worst form of Hefzik. And even L'Tzoyrech, Dibur is almost always awesome. Halicha is a lot less of a hefsik, believe it or not. It's better to walk away than talk. The, the gesturing is also lechatchila, but miyikir din is okay if it's a tzoyrech, because that's not a dibur. It's not halicha. Miramis to a child to quiet down is okay, bang on the table. A rub that's they're waiting for him, a chashavir, they're waiting for him, and he's, he's very disturbed in the Shemar Nesra. So we pass it, he's allowed a motion. Okay, some people would rather finish Shemar Nesra quickly, that's up to them. But Allah, he's allowed to motion to go on. Shah Nu is a form of Dibur and should not be used. Nechira, snorting, making a sound, but non, not verbal sound, is okay based on a Gemara as we saw in Rosh Hashanah Lam Mouthing the words that's chitoch svasayim without, without a coil is a regular Dibur. If you yoitz a mitzvah, it's a hefsik. Suffolk, what to do? The only eitzah is look it up or take ask a rav. That we saw the Mishtabura does pass like the Chayodam, although it's a Phenomenal Chiddush. Lamaisa, if, if the Shaila is not Ma'akiv, better finish Manasra and not ask a Shaila. A Maisa Gomba putting on a talis is Osir, unless it's Matrid. Adjusting the talis or something that's a minor action is Takamutta. 
Safe on the floor, Mikir didn't leave it unless it's mamash disturbing, nitri for daita. Even tefillin leave on the floor. Basically, whenever you have to stop in Shmanesa to motion or to put on a put on talis if you're so disturbed, wait until you finish the bracha. As we said, closing the windows or any other type of, of that type of uh, dis disturbance, if it's no other choice, you'll have to close it. The Yisrael that daven behind the kanim should, in front of the kanim should not move to be in behind the kanim. And this last chiddush, this Yisrael of a person has to eat during Shemayin Esra, better not make a bracha to acknowledge the Fnei HaMelech. Yes. No.